Hi guys, welcome, welcome. Uh, today, I want to introduce you to my friend, Andrew. So we're gonna get to know another one of our ballroom dance friends. So let's get started. Um, Andrew, um, how many years have you been dancing? I think this is my third year, two years, mm -hmm. two to three years. And then what originally got you interested in ballroom dance? Um, I've always been interested, but I think my parents did. I saw them foxtrotting one time when I was a lot younger, and I thought to myself, I want to do that. Okay, and then, uh, so it sounds like Andrew got interested when he first saw his parents foxtrot. Um, that's awesome. Um, and so, how do you take private lessons? Do you take group classes? Um, I take private lessons. I started out taking a combination of private and group, but decided that for a lot of reasons, I prefer the private lessons. So what is it that you prefer about the private lessons? The undivided attention <laughs> and, the, and the speed with which I progress, I would say. I guess make a lot more. Uh, I improve more quickly with privates. Okay, so improving quickly when you get that one-on-one -on -one attention. And I would definitely agree with that, guys. I see group classes as more of a social opportunity, which is a benefit in itself. Depends why you got into dancing. Um, an opportunity to maybe, you know, test drive new partners. Um, and I call it a supervised practice if you're there with a partner where you're forced to rotate and you don't have you, you don't have the social uh, mobility to argue with your partner when the teacher is common during that time so there's definitely um, a benefit to the groups but I 100% agree the privates are worth that extra money because you're gonna learn literally 10 times as fast um, and it's doubtful you're paying like 10 times for that private unless it's a really good pro um, and so, uh, when you were taking groups, how many group classes did you take a week? Uh, one or two. And then, um, now that you're taking privates, how many private lessons do you take a week? I take two a week. And are they butt to nose in one day or do you spread them out? I spread them out. I do it Tuesday, Thursday. And how much drive time do you have uh, between getting home or work to your lesson? It's about 20 minutes. 20 minutes, this is great. Guys, some dancers have to drive a long way and heaven knows I've literally flown to England for lessons. So 20 minutes is a gift. Um, and props to those of you who are dancing who have no lessons available and you're in town, I know that that happens. I would be curious for our viewers if you could comment like how far you drive. Um, it's just interesting to see and where you're from in the country or the world um, to see kind of how those different subcultures around the world play out. Um, do you have any long-term goals for ballroom dancing? I hope that to ballroom dance for a long time. Um, I don't have any aspirations to dance competitively yet, but maybe if I get a little better, I'll my ambition will kick in. Um, and I'll tell you this, guys, Andrew is on to something. Um, this is not my first rodeo. I've been teaching a long time. I have not once had a dancer or couple come to me and say, I want to compete. Um, the vast majority come in for just social purposes, like, eh, my boyfriend wants me to dance. I'm, we we're getting married. Um, I would like to learn to dance because I saw it on TV. But um, as people progress, they do tend to get a little fire under their butt when they see better dancing, when they experience how amazing it feels when you dance with better technique. And at that point, you know, many people do transition. As a matter of fact, I had a wedding couple come to me and he ultimately ended up winning two national championships in his division. And they just showed up because they didn't want to look silly at their wedding. So um, I, he's not the only one that kind of starts out like, yeah, I'll, I'll put my foot in the edge of the pool and then gradually get sucked into the deep end. 
Um, do you social dance? Uh, not really. I, I have, but I, for me, I'd like to get a lot better before I dive into the pool. And then that's my next question is, is why not? Because you just don't feel confident with the skill or just want to feel comfortable? Yeah, I think as a lead, I need to be minimally competent before I can drag someone out there and, and dance. Yeah, and guys, Andrew is on to something here as well. Unfortunately, there is more of a heavy burden for the lead to carry than the follow when you're social dancing. Because so many women are like, oh, I wanna marry a good dancer. Um, I love dancing. I love dancing does not mean I love dancing. It means I want to make, I want to dance with someone who makes dancing feel good and easy for me and makes me look pretty. So ladies, I apologize for that, but I'll tell you this, your social card will be full when you become an amazing leader. Like you'll have ladies lined up, um, chomping at the bit to dance with you. On or off the floor, and if you learn to compete at a higher level on kind of the comp floor or in your private lessons, um, you will be able to razzle and dazzle when you go out to that like bar social setting. I think, personally, I think ballroom dancing is the best social lubricant I can possibly imagine. Um, so, uh, do you practice? And if so, alone or with a partner? No. No I, practice. I That's should. okay. I should, I should practice, but I don't. And to tell you the truth, guys, I know many competitors that don't practice either. That's okay. You will learn pra faster if you practice, but no biggie if you don't. It's certainly not required, okay? And I, as the pro, am not impressed or like a couple more because they practice or don't practice. Um, that's really up to you, the couple. And honestly, guys, practice makes predictable. It doesn't make perfect. And you do know in the lesson, your pro is going to be riding your butt to make sure you're doing it well. So there are some benefits. Okay, guys. Um, so have you ever had a dance partner? Or do you just dance with the pro or social dancing with whoever happens to be in your arm? I started out with a, a dance partner. We were gonna take lessons together, but that went kaput. And so now I just dance with my pro. And I've seen this a ton too, guys. I always worry when a couple comes to me as a romantic couple, and if they split up like, oh darn, I'm gonna lose two students. And you know what, sometimes one stays and they become an amazing dancer. And guess what, especially for leads, your uh, girlfriend option tours are gonna open real wide once you become a good dancer. Um, so what do you feel you get the most out of in terms of ballroom? dance? Is it you like the music? Is that fitness? I mean, everyone is, is getting something different out of it. Um, I, I like the music and I like the, um, the athleticism of it. I came to ballroom in part because the old sports that I used to do, I sort of aged out on those and I was looking for something um, other than golf to, to get some exercise and dancing to music is more fun than anything. So. And friends, I totally um, am heart to heart with Andrew on this one. You know what got me into ballroom dance? I danced a ton as a kid, I did different styles, but um, I didn't wanna be the creepy old lady in the club. And I was like, you know what? Ballroom dance is the only one I can do until the day I die and I will blend and be physically able to do it. It's not like hip hop or ballet that wreaks havoc on your body. Um, and one of the things I love about social dancing is the social fluidity. It doesn't matter um, what your age is. You know, I've had youth students that are happy as a clam dancing with 80 year olds. You know, it's, it's truly a shared language and something that we love to do. Um, so I think that makes it really, it's, it's part of the joy. It's not just the music and the movement and the getting tired. And I love all that stuff too, but I definitely um, like that it transitions generations. Um, so do you have a favorite style of dance that you do? Yeah, I, I, my favorite is um, Foxtrot, Waltz, Quickstep, Tango. 
And do you do international or American style, or have you done both? Both in the Latin dances, but um, you're, uh, the international style primarily for the waltz and the quick step and the foxtrot, if there is such a thing. Yeah, and certainly in the community uh, where we live, in our part of the country, the international style is much more popular. If you're watching from somewhere around the world, you definitely do international style outside of the United States. If you are in the United States and in a chain studio, like a Fred Astaire or Arthur Murray, they only singularly teach the American style. And for our area, um, because the American styles are so much easier, we, we all do international style, and honestly, we all do American style too. So um, it's kind of fun when you go to a social dance, you do get a lot of diversity. Um, now, can you, since you have taken group classes, can you describe your favorite type of group class or what makes that fun for you? Um, it's been a while since I was in a group class, but um, what I liked about it is that you normally rotate your dance partner and so you get practiced in um, dancing with somebody new that you haven't danced with before, which is really useful because uh, to get the synchronicity and the lead and the follow, um, Usually that takes some time dancing together, but in a group class you get you get to dance with somebody different every 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 lesson. Okay, so in case you didn't hear that, um, Andrew likes being able to basically practice with many people. I totally agree, and it's really easy when you have one amateur dance partner to just blame each other for all of the problems. And when you're in a group class and you're like, well, gosh, all the guys are jacking me around. Well, it's probably something you're doing. And it gives you an opportunity to repeat and repeat with other couple or with other um, dancers. So it's different couple partnerships to refine and just fix what your, uh, I'll call it poor muscle memory is. And then kind of reestablish those neural pathways to do it better. Um, so how many te different teachers have you taken with over the years or just one? I've taken a total of three, but for all intents and purposes, just you, Sonny. Oh, don't, no names, no names. Okay, so no names. Um, if you have a favorite teacher, what made them, I don't want to virtue shame anyone. Um, <laughs> uh, if you have a favorite teacher, what were they doing that made it enjoyable or helpful for you? And likewise, did you have a least favorite teacher and what made them stressful or just maybe harder to understand? Um, I think my best teacher uh, I liked because she told me I was doing fabulously well when I knew I was terrible. I so tell that. She appealed to my ego, which always works. Honestly, guys, all of the best, most talented dancers I know, without fail, are the most self-critical. Straight up. So if you think you suck at dancing and you have two left feet, I got news for you. You probably are pretty darn good. Likewise, when I have someone come into my lesson and they think they're God's gift and it does happen, um, it's just a train wreck. They, they generally are completely not one-tenth of the skill and talent of dancer that they think they are. So I think that's pretty funny. And then what about, um, did you have a least favorite teacher, no names, and what did they do that um, was maybe just didn't help you learn as fast or remember things? You know, I don't, I, I, I can't think of the least favorite of the three. I think they all did really well. I think it's a really hard sport, so, um, there's a lot of encouragement. The least, my least favorite program was one where I felt like I was constantly being sold on the ballroom dance experience. Um, and so, in a nutshell, Andrew did not enjoy high pressure sales. Agree. And if your pros trying to sell you a big old package, guys, walk, run the other way. That is a bad sign. Um, I always book just week to week, and that way someone comes when they want to come. It doesn't benefit you 
to come in because you've signed this package deal and you've prepaid so I need to show up when I'm stressed out or sick. You're gonna learn more if you can kind of book at your own comfort level and on days that work for you. You might not be feeling it that day. You might be busy at work, that's fine. Don't let anyone hard sell you on diddly squat. Um, so what has been the biggest surprise for you, Andrew, in kind of the world of ballroom dance? Well, like what you were expecting when you came in versus what it's actually like? That's an easy one. Um, the biggest surprise is how really difficult ballroom dancing is. I think I expected to come in and after a few lessons um, be pretty good and um, what I found is that after a couple of years, um, I like it more and realize that it's a lot harder than I thought it was gonna be. Um, and Andrew's keyed into something here as well, guys. Uh, when you start out, you can take one lesson and hit that floor running. As a matter of fact, I always encourage wedding couples to take, come for your one off, You'll be able to dance just fine. You won't be the next TikTok sensation, but you'll look fine. But when you start learning more, you learn how much you don't know. And you get to see better dancers and it gives you, whoa, I can actually strive for even more. Um, and I think that's part of what's super compelling and keeps me going in ballroom dance is there's, you can always do more. Even the world champions are working on stuff and trying to get bigger, better, faster, more control, more graceful, more musical. Um, there's so many different kind of fun packages to open um, as you progress. Um, okay, so final question for you, Andrew. Um, what advice do you have for people who might be interested in learning to ballroom dance? I would say, um take the opportunity to watch people who are really, really good, and then, uh, then take a lesson. And you'll figure out quickly that how much work is involved, how difficult it is, but how much you wanna be, you wanna get good. Because it's a, it's a beautiful sport. Thank you so much. So how much did we love Andrew? Show him some love in the comments for sharing his story. Um, and again, if you're from a different part of the country or a different part of the world, um, I know it works a little bit different depending on where you are, city to city. I would love to hear A, where you are and B, how your ex experiences have been similar or different to what Andrew's have. So thank you so much, Andrew, for sharing your story with us today. I know it's hard to put yourself out there in social media. Heaven knows I don't like it. Um, it just makes me self-conscious, but um, we're all ballroom dance friends here and um, all striving for the same stuff. So thanks for joining us today and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye guys.